Welcome to the Mystery Bible. My name is Kim Primus. I am your host. We have been looking at Joseph and his time in Egypt. We also last we looked at the death of Isaac, and I explained to you guys the difference as far as the chronology within the Bible and the book of the And uh, we saw last that they divided the, the brothers. Um, they divided their father's wealth, and they separated them. Later. We saw that um, what uh, was uh, Esau's choice. And he went and he took all the possession and he left the land. And the, and uh, verse, uh, chapter 20, uh, 47 of the book of Yashar, at the end of it, verse 33 says, And the whole land of Canaan became an inheritance to the children of Israel for an everlasting inheritance. And Esau, with all of his children, inherited the mountain of Seir. So we see that this, um, the land of Canaan, uh, is the children of Israel's inheritance. We know that they have to come back to fight for that. So we're going to look at, uh, the book of Yasher, chapter 48. We're going to read from there. But, um, I want to bring you some other things. We've been looking, as I said to you, at some other, um, source to gather information so that we could get a behind the scenes uh, understanding, if you will, of some of the things that took place uh, within the Bible that um, we just saw, but we never saw any history behind it or what took place. So there's a couple of things. The two books that uh, that I've been pulling out of is the Legend of the Jews, also the Book of Josephus with the Bible and the Book of the Asher. And once in a while, when I um, on a topic that I'll, I'll bring some more additional information from other sources read at, or collected. Uh, but I've been working with those. So now let's continue. And I wanted to take a peek at the book of um, Legend of the Jews. And you're going to get a little insight as to some of the things that happen with the uh, these two men, the baker and the wine bearer. And then we will go into uh, the book of Yasher and bring and begin our descent into the, uh, you know, looking from this vantage point as to what happened. And then we'll compare it also. With that. So let's go back into the book of um, the legend of the Jews. And we're still in chapter one, looking at the life of Joseph. And um, uh, let me read a little piece of that so that we will get some insight as to the situation of the two prisoners that had presented. Remember, we read, we read about them earlier, but it gives you a little more insight. And I wanted to bring it here before we move forward into um, when uh, Joseph exits the prison and all of those different things. So let's uh, take a look at that and see what it says. And again, this is in chapter 1 in the Legend of the Jews. And it came, and it all came to pass as Joseph said, on the third day, the day we are upon, he explained the meaning of their dreams to the two distinguished prisoners. His son was born unto Pharaoh, and to celebrate the joyous event, the king arranged a feast for his princes and servants that was at the last eight days. So he's partying for eight days, as we said. He invited them all and all the people to his table, and he entertained them with royal splendor. So this is a really good party. The feast had its beginning on the third day after the birth of his child, and on the occasion the chief butler was restored in honor to his butlership, and chief baker was hanged. Now we're going to look and see why he was hanged. And again, the Bible didn't go into it, but the legend of the Jews did. And it says that um, for Pharaoh um, his counselors had discovered that it was not the butler's fault that the fly had uh, dropped into the king's wine. So we know that the wine, there was a fly in the wine of the, um, the butler, the king's cup when he was being served at, and that is the reason by which the wine uh, barrel was thrown into prison. Again, the Bible doesn't go into the details of it, but we we're getting some of the details of it here. But the baker had been guilty of carelessness in allowing the pebble to get into the bread. Likewise, it appeared that the butler had had no part in the conspiracy um, uh, to poison the king while the baker 
was revealed as one of the plotters. So we see that these two men, one was plotting against the king and the other was not. And um, upon the discovery of either, one was restored and we saw that the baker was a part of this plot to um, kill the king and he was hanged. So that's the reason behind that. And again, I know I told you the Bible doesn't go into a lot of details about that. So now we're going to go into um, uh, another part of it. We're going to look at um, uh, Josephus, and we are going to get some insight here as to um, what happened with Joseph about him being freed. I wanted to give you this piece of tidbit before we go into the story, uh, because I think it's really cool that they mention it this way. It says, But God freed Joseph from his confinement after he had endured his bond for two years, so two years in prison, and had received no assistance from the cupbearer. Remember, he had made a deal with the cupbearer to remember him when he got before the king, and he did not. Um, who did not remember what he had said to him formerly? And God contrived this method of deliverance for him. And that's what I wanted to read that piece to you guys, because it does bring a beautiful insight into um, into this story about um, how did uh, Pharaoh came about with the dream. And in the book of Josephus, it mentions that he came up with a plan. Uh, he came up with a plan of the deliverance, and he executed that plan. And the reason why I wanted to bring that to you is to remind you guys that God said, many are the afflictions of the righteous, but God deliver him out of them all. And so God, when God contrives a plan on your behalf, um, it takes some time. And um, uh, w the plan that he had contrived was that um, the man had to be restored. The wine bearer, one of these two men, had to be restored. One, And based on their character and, and what they were doing in life, uh, we know that one was a plotter to try to kill the king, and the other was a wine bearer. He was guilty. But these two men, first of all, the plot that God had uh, put together started way before Pharaoh's dream. It actually started when these two men distinguished, as, as it says in, in, um, in the uh, legend of the Jews, that um, these two distinguished prisoners, if you will. So it had to be um, separated from the regular guys, the common boys, as they say. And so God distinguished a plan, or he came up with a plan, or he contrived a plan for the deliverance of this young man because he was still in his teens, late teens. And so um, these two men have to get into their situation. The reason why I'm rehearsing this is so that to remind you sometimes you and I are in situations long and we, in our situation, in our mind, thinks that we should have been delivered out of it and from it a long time ago. But we see that this young man, there was a plan in place and it took two years. Um, after this woman uh, put him in, part of his wife, we know that she kept coming after him even while he was in prison. She kept coming to seduce him, uh, but he would not relent. And so God had to come up with a plan that took two years, guys. First of all, the fly had to go into the cup. Second, this plot had to mature that um, the baker was a part of it. And once that plot was matured, then he did what he did, and these two distinguished gentlemen were placed into prison, and then God was able to begin to continue his the, uh, that thought that he had devised in order to get this done. The first was that he, this man, um, he made an agreement with, um, with, with Joseph, but he didn't follow through with his Joseph, with his, his agreement, and God continued to formulate his plan to take care of him. And God contrived this method of deliverance for him. Pharaoh the king had in his sleep the same evening two visions, and after them had an interpretation of them both given to him. He had forgotten the letter, 
but remain uh, retain the dreams themselves, being therefore troubled at what he had seen, for it seemed to him to be all of a maliciously nature, um, meaning that he, he knew it was a bad dream. Okay, and um, he had to uh, he needed some answers, and so this is the situation that um, he was and. While he was dealing, trying to get these interpretations from these other men, his leaders, his religious peace, his priests, and all this stuff, and um, uh, nothing came place. So God had to come up with part of this plan was to um, kind of jolt, if you will, the memory of the wine, the cupbearer at the joint, uh, it, you know, of David. That, I mean, to, of Joseph, he had to remind him. So God came up with a situation that will cause some remembrance to this particular man, the cup bearer, and God instituted uh, dreams that his people could not interpret. And after that, then it says that the man remembered. And um, let's see what it says in Josephus, and then we'll go. But when they hesitated about it, um, the king who was so much the more dis disturbed, and now it was that the memory of Joseph and his skill in dreams came into the mind of the king's cup bearer. When he saw the confusion that Pharaoh was in, so he came and mentioned Joseph to him, and also the visions he had been in prison. But see, the same thing had to happen to him. The Bible says he's now going to comfort the king with the same comfort that he had, and that's what God does to you and I. We we go through situations because God knows that someone else needs the answers, and so you and I go through it so that we can then comfort those by which we have been comforted, and that is a principle that is within the Word of God. So we are looking at these things give birth, but it gives it takes time, and look at the detail of the plan that God had to come up in order come up with in order to bring this young man out of prison to bring him into and because God wanted to place him also into a position that was much higher than what was taken away from him. And so sometimes God is working on your behalf, but you are trying to rush it and you come out of faith. But if you stay in faith and be faithful, God will be faithful to you as well. And so we are looking at this beautiful story unfold with the faithfulness of God and the faithfulness of this young man, because he was still faithful to God while in prison. And so you and I, it's just a metaphor that we are in this prison of our situation as he was in this prison of his situation. But God is plotting on your behalf. He's contriving a method of deliverance for you. And so as he begins to uh, contrive this method of deliverance, he is looking at it at a longer um, term than you and I would. We would look at it at shortly, you know, a couple of years, one year, two years. But he's looking further out where he is preparing a position of authority, of influence, because God sees something that happened. Uh, he knows that something is going to happen. And so let's take a look at, and we're going to come back to that piece right there, but I want to bring you back to the book of Yasher to see how that opens up in chapter 48. In those days after the death of Isaac, the Lord commanded and caused a famine upon the earth. Now, this is a part of the plan that God had contrived. Because if you go back and you study Genesis, God told Abraham that he would deliver his people that would be in bondage. And this is all of God's plan, all of this stuff. And how did they get into bondage? Well, this is the plan that uh, God has put together, and they're moving pieces all over for you. And I, the Bible tells us, are the body of Christ, and that uh, Jesus is the head, and there's some movement happening. And many of us are getting frustrated because we don't see the um, manifestation of our blessing. But I want to encourage you that sometimes 
it may take two years. But God has a long outlook for you because he is trying to elevate you higher than you were before. So you just have to learn how to trust him. <clears throat> and you know, <clears throat> excuse me, you hear people say all the time, you know, to trust the journey, trust the journey. And so I want to encourage you guys to trust the journey because it is a, it's all unfolding for you, but you just have to allow the time, the, the time that you have, that you hear me talk about it, stay in worship, stay in prayer. That's the space by which the, the, where your manifestation comes and the time that many of us, uh, cause because it hasn't showed up right away. Many of us lose our blessing because we step out of faith because we don't understand that God is working behind the scene. We haven't trusted him totally. We haven't absolutely are confident that he will do what he said he was going to do regardless of the time. But we see this young man, he was in a situation where he had no place to go, no place to run, and he had an opportunity to break his faith with God and give up on God. But God is working behind the scene on his behalf, even though he doesn't know it. And so he is causing a situation within where the other man is located. This is what I've been talking to you guys about, the grace of God. And the grace of God means the divine influence and the benefit that it brings to the believer. And that force, that power, the grace of God, is the peace that he uses on mankind because he has given us a will. He can't truly really violate that, but he can influence us. He can cause situation to arise, to make us to make decisions that is going to bring to pass his desired outcome. His desired outcome is that Joseph would be standing side by side with Pharaoh. And because that was his desired outcome, he had to contrive a plan of a method of deliverance for this young man. And within that, it took some time. And so we see that this man identifies, his memory is um, uh, came back, as they said, and now it was that the memory of Joseph and his skills in the dream came into the mind of the king's uh, cup here again. You see how God works with his grace. It came into his mind. Now, the cup bearer passed a decision. When he saw the confusion that the Pharaoh was in, he came and he mentioned Pharaoh to him. So God comes into the mind of the person and he influenced them into the process by which they are now going to bring to pass his desired outcome for our life. And we see that um, because it, uh, in those days after the death of, of Isaac, the Lord commanded that uh, cause famine to come upon the whole earth. And so he's alerting Pharaoh that this famine is coming on the whole earth. And because this famine is coming, he's going to necessarily need this young man because God is going to use him to sustain his people which is in another area. And this young man is going to be the one by which the catalyst, the nexus, by which God is going to provide for all of his people. This is, the Bible talks about God contriving a plan of deliverance. So we see um, all of you guys that are in situations today, I want you to be um, encouraged, if you will, that God has, um, he has contrived of method of deliverance for you. For whatever situation you're in, God has contrived. And because he has contrived it, he's working on it for you. And all you need to do, the scripture says, after you have done all uh, that you have done, you believe God, everything is to stand there for. It tells us that the scripture is that you have need of perseverance, you have need of patience, um, you have need of all of these things. Why? Because in our tribulation, it says, tribulation work of patience and as we become patient and allow god to work in our lives in our situation because he has the uh, he has contrived a method for our deliverance it's going to take some time he has to cause situations to happen so that um it is now it is 
it was that the memory of Joseph and his skills in the dream came into the mind of the kings up here. So God is going to have to remind some people about a few things in order to get what he needs for you. So be patient with him. Be um, Place yourself in a space of worship. Stay there and look from whence your help comes. And that comes from God knowing that he has contrived enough of religion for you. So I wanted to piece that together so that you can get an understanding, a deeper understanding of all of these basic stories that are coming in. But this is one of the reasons why I wanted to go and get a behind-the-scenes look to bring other things um, to the front, the forefront of the story so that you and I can get a deeper understanding of what's happening and by just the uh, in the King James where it's just giving you detail the, uh, the end products the end product if you will so let's take let's go back into uh, Josephus and you'll see that this young man was um, uh, this distinguished gentleman gentleman was reminded and um, and vision had to happen to him and the vision happened to him the dream happened to him with in that area again this is all god's plan guys so um once <clears throat> he had his dream that young man interpret his dream it came to pass with both of the the the, the men he then whispers to pharaoh and says hey there's this young man in prison and he interprets dream his name is joseph and he's in bound he's there because of this and so let's see what happens as this story now is being related to the king. Let's take a look at it from the vantage point of Joseph. That Joseph himself was laid in bounds by Potiphar, who was his head cook as a slave. But he said he was one of the noblest of very same day. And um, so he's one of the, the noblest of the stock of, of Hebrew. So he's now giving all this man the good stuff about uh, Joseph, and he's becoming a witness, if you will, for his character. And um, as he becomes a witness for his character while he was there in prison, now um, he is going to shine in the eyes of the leader of Egypt, Pharaoh. And so it tells us that this man is the noblest. This is his... Um, his uh, way of saying, representing what Joseph is, noblest of the stock of the Hebrew, and said further, his father lived in great splendor. If therefore thou wilt send for him and not despise him on the score of his misfortune, thou wilt learn what your dream signifies. So the king commanded that they should bring Joseph into his presence. And those who received the command came and brought him with them having taken care of his habit, that it might be decent as the king had enjoyed them. So now we see that uh, Potiphar, he was one of the leaders uh, in, in the king's uh, uh, men, his order was overridden, if you will, by the king's order. And so um, there are uh, lots of symbolism here within this situation, the story that I want to pull out for you guys. The Bible tells us that Satan is the accuser of the brethren, and he sets out a decree upon our life. He makes an announcement. And based on our behavior to us to living in the flesh, living in the spirit, he makes an announcement, and he wants to hinder you and I. And he sends out a word, if you will. And then when the king, who is Jesus Christ, comes on the scene, and he sends out a word, his word, is more powerful than that of Potiphar's, if you if you understand my my, my grip. His word rides and commands more attention than what the enemy says to you. And so we find the word of God and listen to the command of Jesus, who is the king, and it overrides anything that the enemy divided and said to you, and whatever Jesus said will come to pass if you allow it and you continue to in faith and to him. So we see that the king um, made a command and they brought this young man up. It says, but the king took him by the hand. So um, king brings him up and the favor of God 
remember that this young man still has the blessing in his life. And so that's what I want to bring to you that I know that there are many out there preaching the prosperity message, and that's all they preach, you preach most of it, you want to see it all, all over the place. But this guy had the blessing. This is where they're looking back in, in the history of the, uh, the children of Israel and the history of the Bible. And we talk about the blessing and where it goes to. You hear them preach about the blessing of Abraham. You hear them preach about the blessing. And um, it is a powerful force by which one gets the wealth of the wicked. It draws it to us and pulls it. That's the purpose of it. But I am teaching you guys that's not all. Within that, they're, we're looking still at these men going through some hardship, being imprisoned and bound and all kinds of stuff, being lied upon, accused, all of that. And yet, um, you know, they didn't live in all this, in the palace, if you will. They were in the tents and all of these places. And yet, they were prospering in many other ways than material stuff. And I've told you guys, we prosper in wisdom, understanding, kindness, long suffering. Uh, we prosper with fate. All of these things we prosper with. Uh, and then, uh, eventually the other things are fast. But the Bible says, seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness. That righteousness is all of the words that he has spoken. All of that is the word of God. All of that, that is his faithfulness. As we begin to seek God um, and all of his righteousnesses, policies, and procedures, if you will, as we are new citizens within this kingdom, as we gather information and study that, we gain insight, and then it says that all these things will be added onto you, because then we will learn how to assimilate faith and the blessing to get all these things. So, but the things is not the main thing that you and I are focusing on, the main thing that you and I are focusing on is getting to know God and getting to know His Word. So this young man is going to, the, the plan that is contrived, uh, the method of his deliverance is in full effect, has been in full effect, but it's not just the deliverance of him that God was interested in. This is one of the servants, but he was interested in also in the deliverance of his people. And so this plan was contrived to bring them into part of provision, which he said in the scripture, my God shall supply all of you. And we're watching it in this story. So we see that at, um, this young man, when he came out um, of prison, that Pharaoh was excited, couldn't wait for him to get there, tells us that he went and grabbed this young man's left hand, pulls him up, because he has been tortured for a couple of nights about these dreams that he's having and losing his mind. And so um, let's take a brief look at that uh, encounter, looking from Josephus' side. It says, But the king took him by the hand, and, O young man, say he, for my servants bear witness that thou art at present the best and most skilled person I can consult with, um, about these dreams that I'm having, you know. Um, he said, uh, uh, I want you to talk to me then. So we see that the king's response is he grabs his hand and he's excited that this young man is here because he knows that he is the best skilled representative and he is going to have a conversation um, about this dream, these dreams that we have. And you can get some answers. So let's just continue reading that. So I consult with my Vorsafe, me the same favor which thou bestowest on thy servant of mine, and tell me what events thou, that they which are the vision of my dreams. So he tells him, he says, um, you, you spoke to my servant while he was in jail. Come talk to me and share with me your story. And I desire the to suppress nothing out of fear, nor to flatter me with lying words or with what they please me, although the truth should be a... So he's laying the ground rule by which now he wants this young to be, to have this relationship with, through the dream. We are going to pick up, I know it's getting longer and I want to continue this later 
um, it uh, this story is a really good story as we're going to pick it up in the next uh, podcast. But uh, it is a full story that I wanted to give to you guys so that you can see as we pull these other parts that God is interested in it. He has contrived a plan to deliver you, and it's going to take some time, but we will. And I want to make sure that you guys know this. So thank you for coming. And I want to uh, thank you guys for supporting me financially. I know that many follow me and, and support me, and I do appreciate it. Thank you so much. I pray that God will continue to bless you, keep me safe in this crazy time of violence as he's doing, as you're seeing. Uh, thank you. Talk to you.